Hey there, guys. I am back. And I hope all of you are back, too. For all I know, I'm speaking to an audience of nobody by the time this video gets up there. I don't know. But do you know what I have? This is, I'm quite certain, the Monthly Knife Club Ultimate Box for December 2023. We are getting so close to the end of the year. This, as of the day that I am recording this video, it is the, is it the 22nd? I just want to make sure. Yes, it is, in fact, December 22nd. So, um, yeah, okay. Full transparency and honesty, this box comes to me directly from Monthly Knife Club. Daryl sends me this box, Daryl, owner and operator of Monthly Knife Club, if and when they have extra boxes to send out. I have never in my life uh, subscribed to or paid for the ultimate box. I've had subscriptions, yes, money out of my pocket, yes, to other plans of Monthly Knife Club but never have I paid for the ultimate box. And I want you guys to know that up front, um, just for the sake of honesty. And, you know, so you guys know everything that goes on. This is a, uh, a freebie from him for me to unbox on the channel when they are available. That's why you don't always see them every month. Sometimes they're just not available. They, all the orders are fulfilled for, you know, all the boxes or something like that. So I really appreciate it when he does send it to me. Um, and there we go. Fittingly, I'm going to use this month's Onyx knife to get into this month's monthly knife of uh, uh, bleh, bleh, bleh. ultimate. That's the wording I'm trying to do. This month's ultimate. Look, I was even able to take the shipping label off the front of the box, which is cool. And and also, this is what I respect. He knows that I'm going to meh or even don't like some of the stuff in this box, but he sends it anyway because he knows that there's stuff I will like in it, and he's a true, he's an honest, good businessman, which is why I always put a link to Monthly Knife Club. And it's never an affiliate link, it's just stuff that I spend my money on, so I think it's a, I think it's a reputable company that you can feel safe spending your money on, and I am happy to do that, because I think it's, you know, not a ripoff. so. Let's see what we've got. We've got, oh, we've got some stuff in here. Um, let's take it all out and see what we've got. Wow, okay. Well, we're just dumping stuff all over the place. Now, I gotta bend this card in half because I don't want to see what some of the other, I haven't gotten my tier two yet, so I don't wanna see that yet. I want it to be a surprise. Um, on this card on the back, it will list some of the other you know, knives, like for instance, the Onyx, the tier two, the standard name brand, stuff like that. Um, but on the front, we have um, the advanced, the premium, the ultimate, these build off each other like like other boxes do. So uh, we get the ultimate, so we get the, everything in the advance and everything in the premium, and then that. So let's take a look. First of all, we've got a cool Kung Fu Panda style Monthly Knife Club sticker. They always send out great stickers. Um, yeah, there we go. I like it. So starting with... Uh, oh, that's the first thing. Monthly Knife Club Warrior Panda Laser Glitter Sticker. Value is $4, but of course on the card it's gratis. It's for free. It's just in the box because um, it's cool. Moving on to the Paracord Keyring Compass Tool. And they give this a value of $9.99. Uh, we have seen this exact thing somewhere. I always say that... You know, the biggest value on these things is just the 550 cord that it's made of. Um, it's good to have. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm So it, this is not a bracelet, obviously, unless you have the world's tiniest wrist, tiniest, most weird shape and wrist. But it has, of course, it's got a bottle opener. Why wouldn't it have a bottle opener? Of course, you need a bottle opener out somewhere on your 550 cord. Um, but why not? But what you can use this for is to clip other gear onto. So it's got sort of a D-ring-ish thing. Um, and you can clip that on, and then you have a length of 550 cord. It doesn't say how much you have. I'm going with probably totally unfolded and everything, about 20 feet, just estimating here. And then you have a compass, which is good to have. Does it come off of here, or is it? No, it's totally in there. You could easily, if you wanted to, cut, that's very thin plastic. You could cut that. How accurate is this one? I'm not sure. I gotta get my bearings on the house. And so if the front door is that way. Uh, you know what, to be honest, sitting here, I'm not that sure. I'm just not. 
I'm trying to visualize everything. But um, then you, like I said, with this uh, bottle opener, though, you could clip some other gear onto it. Um, eh. It's, kind of, it's pretty meh. I mean, in my opinion. It goes in the meh pile. Um, it is, it is, it is an, like an easy way to carry around some 550 cord on your gear. Again, to me, that's the biggest value on this. And I kind of can get down with that if it's clipped onto the outside, it's readily accessible if you need it. Um, the compass to me is negligible. I mean, I'm, I'm not, some of those things, some of those little ones aren't even really that accurate. I couldn't tell you for this particular one without actually taking it outside and trying to do any kind of little navigation with it. Problem is I just find some of these to, like these little tiny ones to be not that accurate, but to shoot a general bearing plus or minus, I don't know. I gotta do a compass video. A lot of people have asked me to do that. I'm gonna, but I need to buy, cause I can't, I think the boys Kung Fong doodled mine somewhere. Uh, an actual, another military issue, LC2. Um, Lensatic, you know, with the tritium and everything, so at least I'm using a piece of real gear. But yeah, I'm like, meh. But could be useful to you in some ways, but there we go. <clears throat> Next, the Zippo, Zippo Cayuga ballpoint pen. I have, now I think I've gotten one of these before also. However, it did not work. So it is, it's not a tactical pen. We're not doing one of the tactical pens. It's just a Zippo pen, but it's got the little Zippo pattern. It can be refilled, which is cool. I need something that I can actually write on. Th this one works. And we can write, we can do our standard writing test. It is a fine point ballpoint pen, not gel ink. This being a ballpoint pen means that it will work on, I swear, to, you know, all those, uh, here's here's my my tactical notebook, which I have, yay. Um, which means, have I taken that stuff out? I have some stuff in this notebook I'm not supposed to have in this notebook. Yes, and I did take it out and I shredded it. Okay, that's not, never mind. This is, I don't know what the hell that is. This is Fallout stuff. These are things I needed to kill in order to, never mind. So waterproof paper, ballpoint pens, and now logic is like, why the hell didn't you do that on the piece of paper that's already full of crap? But anyway, ballpoint pens will work fine on waterproof paper. Give them a few seconds for the ink to dry and they won't really smudge. So this works well for regular notepads, waterproof paper, and it's a pretty cool Zippo design. And it will, you can rotate it, to the left or right, um, and you can use any number of standard refills. So, you know, I like it, and I'll tell you why. Every company sends us all sorts of uh, tactical, tactical pens. A lot of them are like these cheap crap aluminum ones from China. At least this is kind of a cool, kind of a cool pen, a daily life pen, a pen you can use all the time um, and not look kind of weird doing it. So I like this. It's not, fan you know, it's not the fanciest thing, and it's not. It's an, it's an edc -able item, you know? There we go. Next, I, you know, every time I pick something up, it's the next item. Black Molly Sling Bag for the value, oh, by the way, $9.99, $34.95. This is another thing that every time I get one, it disappears uh, either into the boy's room or uh, with giggles for her walks. She walks, I'm so proud of her. She walks for fun. She'll walk like on a 13 mile trip instead of having getting a ride somewhere or, or being driven or driving herself. She'll be like, I'm going to the DMV today. Oh, really? You, you driving? No, I'm going to walk. It's 13 miles away. She does that. <clears throat> so, all right. Very weatherproof and waterproof. Because I'm a dick and a giant one at that. Uh, I will nitpick that it would be great if it opened more on either side so you could get more of an opening to get better access to what's in it. But considering its size, it's not bad. It is fully weatherproofed all the way around, like nice heavy gauge rubber all the way around. So if you are out and you're in the rain, if you if you have this and you're somewhere where it is wet and swampy, you could just lay this thing on the ground and it might be a little wet and gooey when you put it back against your body, but all of your belongings inside are going to stay very safe. 
You've got a nylon separation here, one pouch. You've got another nylon separation and pouch here. This has a Velcro strap. So if you have, I don't know, a small tablet or a big phone or just something you want to keep safe in here, that'll do. It has an excellent nylon gear smell and you know how important that is. Especially when you're the kind of weirdo that smells everything. We've got dual zipper. And got some extra threads that need to be cut. And that is why in the military, you always ca carry a lighter or a knife with you. You should always carry a knife with you anyway, but a lighter to burn little threads on your uniform after you get stuff sewn on, which is not so much a problem with the new uniforms. But with BDU days, yeah. Hook up keys or any other dangly stuff, another external pocket, and some elastic. Pew! Pew! Okay. Um, external pouch. Now the weatherproofing is here on the external. Once again, um, not here, but here. And then you've got a couple of Pell's webbing Molly straps over there. This is by East West USA. I don't know if I've ever heard of East West. Um, this product contains DEHP. I don't know what that is. But in California, it will give you cancer, like everything else in California. Um, now here's interesting. They give this a $34.95. The tag from East West says $47.99. That's gotta be MSRP, of course. Oh, and then you've got another pouch behind the padding. You don't get the weatherproofing here, but it's behind the padding. You can snap that on. And that's some decent padding, you know, for the size of it. You can. I know I'm spending a lot of time on this little bag, but... So you've got these three rings. So you can... Ah, uh, three rings, like a surface. You can secure it to something through those rings. Or... Of course, you've got <clears throat> the single sling arm, which... I get it now, too, also, so you can choose which D-ring you secure it to for carrying, which is a nice choice. And I'm honestly not sure what you do with that, unless it's to scrunch up the rest of the material and put it in there, but okay. So overall, I'm not a sling bag kind of guy. I really am not. But I know people that would make really good use of this, and... You've got a patch panel here that you can put whatever you want on. Comes a little subdued flag. But it, it seems really decent quality, stitched well, heavy gauge nylon, really good waterproofing on the inside. Oh, and a pickup handle. And then you've got a little bit more webbing on the sides and on the top. If I was into a little sling bag for like EDC, I probably would buy this. Um, I'm, you know, or I would buy it for somebody that I knew was. And I think this is exactly the kind of thing that Giggles would like to carry. Um, you know, if she was going for a walk somewhere, just carry stuff instead of a pocketbook or purses or whatever women do with their girly things. I could see her wanting to use something like this, just throw over her shoulder and, and take a walk with. Um, but this is actually a pretty good quality item, it feels like. And I, I do like it for its features and its construction and everything. Um, cause I know it's got a decent value attached to it and, um, I think it's something that would hold up. Okay. Here we go. Last item. Ooh, this could go either way guys. Last item in the advanced is the Fox Edge Blue Smoke, blue anodized value 34.95. Oh, you know how I feel about Fox Edge versus Fox. Love Fox knives, Fox Edge. Not so much, um, but we'll see. This also will murder you in California. And we'll see how this comes out. Mm. Yeah, you know what? All right, on outward appearance, I have seen Kershaw's that look just like this that have been pretty good knives. I like the blue anno, it's aluminum, not tie, obviously. Price is $34.95, so we're not getting titanium. It's got a hinderer style lock stop, which is cool. Um, now I would hope that this would be steel, but 
It is very lightweight. I'm going to have to look it up. I mean, it's got to be steel. You couldn't have an aluminum lock side, could you? I mean, I guess you could. They've done it. But um, anyway, it's nicely machined. It, you know, fit and finish is actually feels pretty good. Everything seems equal. The, you know what? The, the show side, the screws are just a little bit proud versus the lock side but they are they're all equal though so that might be a uh, on purpose you know an interesting little pivot there and taken out of the box it is dead center i'm wondering if this is going to suffer the long the big hand problem that some of us have with big hands and small liner locks where my finger goes right on i said liner locks i mean frame locks where my hand goes right on that frame and potentially pushes the detent in um, I hope not. There, that's not bad. Um, so, ooh. That is a very um, well-placed lock, but also look how late it locks up already. It's already, like, all the way on the blade. It's not sticky or anything. And it's not assisted. That's all well-done detent. Um, the speed of the action is all just because of well well machined detent right there. It's got a shallow hollow grind on the blade. It's got a bead blast finish. I hate the way I sound on camera when I listen back and saying bead blast finish, but it is, um, which matches the finish on both sides. It has a deep carry clip, which I like, which, oh my God, that's incredibly tight. Oh. Virgins could take lessons from this on being tight. I, yeah, I just said that. I did. Um, that is, I, I would hope that that would not be a pocket shredding consideration, but action is really good. No jimping up there. But overall, it's it's fairly comfortable. It's really, it's small. It's small in my hand, which I don't like, but it's comfortable. And dare I say, I might actually like this Fox Edge knife as an EDC size knife. I hate using the term starter knife. I hate it. But maybe as a lower cost knife, a good starter piece for a collection or something like that. It is finished nicely. Could use a little strop, I'm sure, but it's finished nice. There have only been two Fox Edge knives I've actually kind of liked, and they both came out of Monthly Knife Club which is crazy. Slice was, um, I could feel it a little bit. You know, sometimes I'm like, oh, I felt nothing. I could feel that a little bit, but it actually, it also was cut before I realized it. And now let's do the pull through. That's more effort than I like, but it got it done. Pew, 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 oh, no, pew. I want to do more pew. Pew, pew, pew. Wait, we're like we're like 50-50 on the pew. Um, it's pewing. You just got to get the angle right on it, which I'm not used to. The lock takes a little bit more to disengage than I like, but it doesn't. It doesn't stick. You just got to push it out of the way, and it's very thin, which puts pressure on your thumb. I think with a drop of KPL, it's it's perfectly good coming out. Putting it in, you can, it's dry. That lock is dry. Listen. So I'm gonna, you're gonna hear the noise of moving, of unlocking it and then closing it. I put that right next to the camera so you can hear it. I think with a, a drop of KPL or something, that would be a lot smoother. But we haven't, I mean, it's still perfectly centered. As a small EDC, a less, a lower cost knife, maybe again to start a collection off, or for a knife that you wanna give to somebody who's not quite up to speed on like really expensive knives and stuff yet. This is a good looking knife. I don't hate it. I don't hate this Fox Edge knife. Uh, there are a couple things about it that I'm not thrilled with. I, I think I'll put it in the meh just cause it is really small. I mean, I like, I'm getting to more comfortable with EDC size knives. I'm not gonna put it totally in meh. And I'm not gonna put it totally in like it. I'm gonna put it halfway. But it's weird that both uh, both the Fox Edge knives that I actually kind of like came from Monthly Knife Club. They had an exclusive Fox Edge. So that's everything in the advance plan with a total value of 89.88 and that could be that could be MSRP probably is um, but let's move on. So
the premium plan is everything in the advanced plan plus the Kubi Golf. That's what it's called, the Golf EDC fixed blade. We love Kubis around here. They give this a value of $80. Oh, Jade. Oh, they always, you know what? It's Jade. I already like it. Now, I gotta, I'm got i totally honest with you on this. There's an even 50-50 chance that Daryl stacked this box, put the Jade one in there for me, because he knows I love Jade. Um, usually what happens with Monthly Night Club is they get a, a selection in different colors when they bulk buy. So 50-50 that I randomly got a Jade one, 50-50 that he was like, uh, let me look for a Jade one and put it in the box. Not going to lie. Going to be <laughs> honest with you. So we get Kubi card. That is the Jade that I love, though. The minty Jade, not the ghost Jade color. I, by the way, have never played golf in my life and never will. I don't know if it's a game that I could really get behind. My grandfather, God bless him, I miss him. Lost him, what, three years ago now? Um, four, wow, yeah, four. He was a golfer till the day he died. Um, so before we reveal the blade, we've got the double lock tech lock, which is really cool. So it's got a switch to where, is it letting, gonna let me lock it? Let me open it. So you can open it. Why doesn't it let me lock it? There we go. And it locks so you can't accidentally release it. Double lock tech locks are cool. Sorry, I'm just all thumbs today. And then of course you can remove the screws and you can place it in any way you want. This is set up for a vertical carry. You can set it up for a scout carry, whatever, um, polymer, not Kydex. I know Kydex is a plastic, but I use polymer meaning like an injection molded plastic versus Kydex, which is heated and folded over and formed. I believe we have seen this knife before. I have not seen it in this color combination, which just makes me cream in my cheese, I gotta say. Uh, black and especially, a, this is like a black stone wash, which is the finest color combination to put with jade in my opinion. Um, I'm not super crazy about the blade shape. It's like, uh, you know, Klingon Space Tonto. But the handle is so comfortable. I love it. And the jade color itself, the minty jade, um, it's one step away from Wilkins Swimming Pool Green on this side of color saturation. It's one step away from the ghost jade that was really prevalent when jade came out on this side. It's right in the middle. I love swimming pool green. If I could find out where Wilkins gets his his swimming pool green jade, I would love it. Um, I would make all the knife handles out of it. But it's a beautiful color, and you can see kind of. I love G10 when it almost has like it almost like a wood grain on it. Looks really good. But this is a nicely balanced knife. Um, that edge would be really good for utility in so many ways. First of all, Tantos, you know, made for piercing. That's what their blade shape is for. But you also have the utility factor of being able to get that forward edge flat on the ground for... Pew, pew, pew. I mean, it, it's fantastic for that. I need to look for another money. I think I'm, I'm not out of cutting money, but... Yep, hang on. It's such a small piece of money and I have small cutting surfaces to work with on the knife. It is super sharp, you know, out of the box, um, and it's balanced really well. So oh, that, and that little, sort of, I'll call it a thumb choil. Thumb choil right there fits your thumb perfectly. Ergonomically, it's really greatly designed. I don't know how often I would carry it, but it's a beautiful knife. And it really, it fits your hand so well, especially it's good for big hands, which I love, and I'm sure it fits well for small hands too. I don't know if I own this or if I've just seen it, but it's a really nice knife. Balance is really, really good. So this definitely goes and I like it. I'm gonna put that, I want you to see, I want you to see the jade. I want you looking at the jade. All right, that's cool. And then the last item, so, so I'm sorry, wait, step back. So the premium plan, including everything in the advanced and the value of the Kubi Golf is 169.88. Again, is that all MSRP? I'm not sure, but there it is. Then we have the ultimate. The ultimate, includes all of this that you see before you. 
Then we're going to add the Beyond EBC Kibuga. I'm not gonna lie, I feel wrong saying that word somehow. And it's also a jade folded knife. They give it a value of another $66, brings the grand total value to $235.88. <coughs> Beyond EDC, have I, I don't know anything about this company, I gotta look it up. But I'm excited. So let's see, Beyond EDC knives, congratulations. This is the standard um, use and care release agreement. If you cut your own face off, it's not our fault. I'm actually, it's a satiny pouch. It's more of a nylon-y pouch. There's just loose screws flying around. Is this how they put extra screws? Just sitting in the pouch? Aiden's gonna love this thing. I don't know if I am. What I do love, oh my God, I love that this, so there's, this, I don't know if I can see that. See this, this loop, and then this internal part. This is all one piece of G10. Sorry, it's blurry. From there into this backspacer, all one solid part of JG10. And this is a perfect example of the ghosty JG10 to the minty JG10. Um, this is gonna be a really interesting knife. I have never seen this before. I'm not quite sure how to even open this. So we do have a, a oh, th this screw came out of my clip. Hmm, not thrilling. Now I got it stuck trying to put it back in. The clip is pretty solid without it there though, honestly. And this clip is good. This clip has retention, but it's uh, it lets you get it in there without worrying about your pocket getting all torn up. <coughs> so, I don't know what to use first, the disc or the flipper. Let's flip. That also looks like a Klingon battle weapon right there. This knife has some heft to it, too. It's D2, as you can see on the blade. It has some beautiful grind lines. I need to clean this off for a sec so we can check them out. As, as most D2, being a carbon steel, it's a tool steel, high-speed tool steel. Um, it has a little bit of oil on it. Got beautiful satin grind lines on it. I love it. It's a simple shape, but it's very comfortable. And while it doesn't have jimping, your hand can go right on that thumb wheel and rest. And let's see, so it's liner lock. Very easy to get your hand on the liner lock and one hand this thing. Oh, does that not? No, that does work. A little awkward to get your thumb on it the right way, but once you get it, so you got dual deployment styles. This is a very aggressive looking knife. I gotta say, I've never seen this before. So your lanyard hole is this big ring at the back, which almost gives it like it's gonna have sort of a karambit type vibe, which I'm not too upset with because it obviously is not karambit style. Um, it's got a great, I, so I don't know if you'd call this a drop point or a harpoon because the harpoon section would come so far back. I think a harpoon really has to stop somewhere over there, you know? Now the question is, am I gonna carry, oh, look, the G10's really finished well, by the way. I gotta give it that. The G10 is really finished very, very well. This is totally smooth. Feels like they finished it off with like, all the way up to like 2000 grit. This fuller in here. I'm calling it a fuller because I don't know what else to call it. Totally smooth. You've got very light um, grip texture on the surface here. Um, the fit and finish is actually really, really good. These two pivot pieces are, are totally flush. Um, you've got very even the frame screws. That, I mean, they're the, the frame screws on each side. Very well countersunk and even. Um, I, this, awesome. You just have the two screws here on the back spacer. It's put together really well. I, you know, I, I'm gonna put that, that screw back in. It's not the first knife I've had a clip screw come out on, so I'm not that worried about it. It's just, nah, shouldn't fall out before you even get it, but 
it's it's really quite an interesting style knife. I think I was just talking about the blade though, and I kind of got off track. Um, yeah, so I think think really a harpoon would would stop about there, you know, to be a, a harpoon kind of style drop point blade. Um, but this one takes it all the way back. So I think this is more really it's almost spear point, but not quite. I think drop point really would would describe this one. Oh, that is. That is super sharp out of the box. Um, let's see. That one, I see, that's a great illustration. I didn't even feel it cut. It was cut and split. I didn't even really know it. I didn't feel it cutting through the cord at all as a counterpoint to this guy. Um, let's see. Didn't even really, I mean, I felt a little bit of resistance, just that I felt it go through the cord, but like I, it didn't, nothing stopped it. It just went right through. So the edge on this is finished really just great. Um, where's my pew section? Pew, pew. No, really? Pew, pew. Okay. Uh, this one is just, it's finished really well. I love it because it is fairly unique. You know, I mean, there are some things that look kind of like it, but this one is still fairly unique. And it is, is it on bearings? I can't tell if it's on, I feel like it might be on bearings. But the action on it is just really crisp, drop shutty. Once you get the feel of that disc, it's pretty good. I can deal with that. So there, you got it. See, because you got to get it in, and your thumb can kind of go off of that that uh, incline, we'll call it. But it's an interesting knife, and I I would maybe carry this around, even though it does have like an aggressive fighting knife semi stiletto I know it's not don't get me started on people that improperly label knives as stilettos um, but has that semi stiletto look balance is really good um, I got to look more into this company the beyond EDC so I definitely like this so that is the ultimate plan <clears throat> and overall I really like it um, so we've got the one thing that's in meh, because I'm like, okay, mm, 550 cord's always useful, but yeah, This guy is is sort of in between, like I said, lower cost knife, um, but it's sort of not bad. Not bad as Fox Edges go, because uh, Fox Edges really have a, a total gas station look to me most of the time. And this one doesn't look real expensive or, or real great, but like I said, there's also Kershaw's that are good quality that look just like this one. Um, and the action's pretty good, and I already talked about it, you know, a little bit. Um, the Kubi Golf, like the shape, like the feel. Um, you know, I like the shape of the handle, I should say, like the feel. Blade shape, not so crazy about, but it is finished really well, and this blade shape could have some advantages. Um, you know what I didn't do? You know what I didn't check? Retention on the sheath is, is very nice. Um, so that's really good. We've got the Zippo pen, which I think is a cool EDC kind of piece. I think it's something that you could carry around and use all the time, especially since you could just get multiple generic refills on it. And then the sling bag, which again, I'm, I'm not gonna use, but I know plenty of people that can. I missed another pouch in here that you could slip stuff into. So there's one more thing for it. Uh, feels like it's good quality, made well. So overall, I think this is a pretty good box. I know that there have been ultimates where there were a lot more things I put in don't like it or meh in the past. It's just the way it is. But this one, um, I'm a big fan of these knives so far. Maybe I'm being swayed because they're jade. I'm gonna give this guy a chance or this could be a great knife for one of the older boys maybe to get familiar with the, in, the ins and outs of folding knives, I don't know. Um, but cool stuff. Um, and I really like Monthly Knife Club and that's why I've been subscribed to the ones that I originally subscribed into for a long time and why I kind of, when people do ask me what are, what are some some of the good knife subscriptions, Monthly Knife Club is one of the first ones I point them at. <clears throat> you know, the Onyx for your higher quality, higher end knives. The uh, tier two name brand is usually a, a pretty good quality knife. You know, not way up there, but you're getting a decent knife for your money to build your collection. And then the standard name brand is, um, you know, you, you never get a piece of crap. Uh, it is usually kind of a lower end 
but not a junky gas station knife. And I've gotten some of those too. And then you have like the ultimate, which gives you stuff like this. And then they have so many, if you're into fixed blades, they have a whole fixed blade subscription that you could look at. And they have, I mean, you have to go on their website and look at all the different options they give you. And again, I, I've known Daryl now for a while. I mean, we've never met in person, obviously, but we've had phone conversations and I've gotten his business philosophy and, and we've talked and, um, you know, he seems like a really cool dude. So anyway, here we go. I want to know what you guys think of this box. You can tell me your thoughts on the Monthly Knife Club Ultimate Box overall, what you think of the individual items here, what you think of this box for December. Um, let me know because your opinions really matter to me. I, I'm pretty happy here. What's your favorite thing? What's your least favorite thing? Um, is there something you would carry here or something you absolutely would not carry? I'd like to know. So you guys get to think of what comments you want to uh, share with us so we can talk. And remember that you guys are all absolutely awesome. And I appreciate every single one of you. And I'll be back again real soon.